So yesterday in my clinic, I saw something which I would consider pretty extraordinary. I met two new patients, lovely ladies. One was seeking a minimally invasive thigh lift and the other an elbow lift. And both of these ladies were in their late 50s, both at the BMI of 18, so actually technically underweight, and both were actively taking trizepatide which is one of the GLP-1 agonists, one of the Ozempic, Wigovi, um, Monjaro type drugs. And this is extraordinary to me because these ladies are being prescribed these medicines, which are typically indicated, initially they were indicated for type two diabetes or folks who have a BMI of greater than 30 or maybe 27 with the metabolic syndrome. But there is new evidence and a new school of thought that maybe GLP-1 agonists are good for you. So let's talk about it in this video. So there's no doubt that the GLP-1s have been absolute game changers, especially for the obese patient population. For the first time, we literally have a drug that works. Before, the drugs are very problematic or, or simply didn't work. So it has made a huge difference in many patients' lives. But what about those patients that are almost treating it like a supplement? We're hearing about microdosing GLP-1 agonists are coming on and off them. And we're seeing some emerging evidence that GLP-1 agonists can reduce inflammation in the body. There's long been an association with aging and inflammation. We actually call it inflammaging um, is a term that's used. And we see some of these inflammation markers like CRP, for example, can be decreased by taking GLP-1 agonists. There is also emerging evidence that GLP-1 agonists can just make the metabolic picture look better overall in an individual. For example, it can increase insulin sensitivity, decrease liver fat, and just in general, improve cardiovascular health. There's also some exciting new studies showing that it may help in a preventative way for neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. So does this mean we should all be on GLP-1 agonists? Should we be using them like these women were, not for weight loss, but as a supplement, basically? I'm not really too clear on what the answer is for that yet. There are some rare but very serious side effects such as pancreatitis, gallstones, very rare cancers have been described with these drugs. There's other issues, ethical concerns, um, such as access to the, these drugs. We did have a time when the diabetics weren't able to access these drugs because uh, of a supply problem, because just so many people were on them, as well as the cost um, of going on these drugs long term. There's concerns about rebound weight loss. Patients describe that if they come off the drugs, they gain the weight again and so therefore have a type of dependence about it. There is also described muscle loss but really most of that has got to do with patients who aren't doing resistance training or keeping up the protein while losing weight quickly because they've never been able to do that before until these drugs came along. So while there's definitely some ethical concerns maybe and certainly some health concerns about using GLP-1s as uh, supplements, it's definitely here to stay. The shame or stigma about taking these drugs is definitely going away. More and more prescribers are comfortable, you know, in this case, giving it to folks with a BMI of 18. And in my practice, we're certainly seeing an increased demand for skin tightening procedures, minimally invasive procedures, such as thigh lifts, reverse tummy tucks, mini tummy tucks, elbow lifts, that sort of thing. Because of course, when you lose weight, no matter how you do it, loose skin can be a problem.